So it's a uh, Monday. This Lincoln, I think is what Fifth says, just showed up. Straight out of Bonnie and Clyde. Let's go check it out. Dude, this thing's so Look at that, look at that badass V12. Oh. Then look, look at all the grain, all the wood. Oh, dude. All handmade wood from back in the day. Dude, check this out. Yeah, look at the seats, man. Pick up wood. Look at the woodwork. Like all look the at, attention look, to detail. Look at all the attention, you know, all this. He had his wood trim. So rad, man. Somebody did a damn good job. Back in the oh, day, man. they didn't have machines to do this, man. You know, that's the coolest. I mean, makes me think, you know, how people were into their jobs, their work. You know, they were put the, they were putting their heart in. I wish those days come back. You know. This is what Bonnie and Clyde need to get away. Did you know that Bonnie is buried here in a, in a, in a cemetery in Dallas? Yeah. Both of them. Both They're of in them? separate cemeteries. One's off Fort Worth Avenue and one's they, right over the here. The family didn't want them buried together. Uh, really? Back then you had all these oil and points, the grease points. There, there should be a list somewhere in there. Just the, some cars even had a pedal that would do it for you. You just pop it. This might have been one of them. See, like, things like that. It's way cool. I bet it runs. Trans Am and uh, Trans Am's a little rougher than I remember. And Bonneville's, Bonneville's pretty good, just need the gas tank and shit, we can put it on the line. Well, I thought we bought the pace car. I thought we did too, but I guess it was Bonneville. And does Richard know that? I don't know. He was uh, had a few too many beers that day. So we got one rusty turd and one halfway decent car. So we'll wait till he gets back. Sweet shoes, Fibs. I know, they're red. <laughs> in this jewel. This one caught my eye when I came through a second ago. This is a, a V12 Lincoln sedan. Yeah, it's, a, it's really caught on limousines. Yeah, this thing's just, the, the craftsmanship back there was just awesome. Look at the size of this door. <laughs> and then there's the water pump. But these, uh, if we can get this running, that'd be a big, big plus. And it doesn't look, Apparently the guy that we get all these from took care of his stuff. I mean, it's been sitting there. You get, we know how things can push to the side. But I'm gonna take all the plugs out, drop a few drops of transmission fluid in each cylinder. And because when I hit the starter, it's, and then I put it in gear and we jerk it back and forth to see if it would break loose, but it hadn't yet. But we'll, we'll either get it running or we won't. Why do I smell everything? 
I mean, you pull up to an event in this thing. You know, anybody can pull up in a Rolls, new Rolls, new Ferrari. But pulled up in this, you would be the shit. We are going to cruise around the parking lot with it a little bit. It was locked up, so it's either rust or something worse. But the more we free it up, the less chance we have of yeah. ruining it. Hey, let me roll. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? You know what they say, good employees, hard to find. We're uh, putting transmission fluid in the cylinder, that way if there is corrosion or pitting or anything in the cylinder, it won't destroy a ring. And then we'll move it around and try and get all that surface rust off the cylinder. And hopefully we can get a start after that. I'm not gonna lie, we've already, it's already started. Ran real smooth, so we, uh, I flushed the fuel tank system. Fresh filters, fresh oil. Uh, don't know, I haven't got all the way up to the carburetor yet with the gas. Okay, so this car has manual brakes. There's no hydraulics. So it, we know they work. So once we get this running, and make sure it's not leaking. And we're gonna try to run the block. And I'll let you sit in the back. I'll even open the door for you. Have you tried the clutch or the brakes or anything? Yeah, the clutch up brakes front work. feels like it works. Okay, you have it running off its own system? Yep. Out of its own tank? Yep. Big ass, man. That's what I'm talking about. Wanna see something cool? Okay, you see this little thing right here? That's a float. That's your oil level. Oh, I got you. <laughs> we looked all over for it. Okay, here it goes. What about antifreeze? Did you fill it up? I filled it up. Okay, so one of the times that was open and it fired up and it shot it out, but I had it all the way full. Okay. And you know, these, these should go down to about here. Where's the, where's the uh, overflow? No overflow. Never. They didn't do overflow, so what? Did you let it get up to temperature? Did it melt over? Did you shut the other? How does that work on these ones? There's no thermostat. Here, just run it. Well, I know, but how do we make sure it's not too much pressure once it gets hot? The taps barely on it. Okay. Yeah, super cool. Man. It Just is. Take your time and keep going. Yeah. We'll be driving it this afternoon. That's pretty cool when a car comes in, has a locked up motor, and you're a little worried about your purchase. But uh, Phipps, you know, he's been working on this stuff forever. Probably like, I think he's as old as the car, personally. And uh, we got a runner and driver. That's cool. Look at this. Okay. This is our air conditioner. But look, so I got a vent there. How cool is that, huh? I know everybody's looking at this thing going, well, the interior's trash. Well, it's Moz. M-O-T-H-S, Moz. Is that how you smell? Correct! And that's too bad, because it doesn't smell. There was, when I was vacuuming it out, there, there may have been a, one or two rat turds, but you know, I was in a big barn. But when I was vacuuming it out, the Moz were, I think it even charges. The, the dome lights work, the, the lights work. The, some nice wood, huh? It, it is. I like stroking this wood. Oh, pause. But the back window rolls up and down. Uh, but look, okay, people, look at this. I know you've already looked at it. But, but look at the, the couch. It's a couch. And then when that armrest comes down, you can actually reach into the trunk. But I like fat fender cars. You know, I like the 50s, 40s, 30s. Now, this could be good or it could be great. But uh, Phipps got the. Uh, V12 1936 Lincoln K series going, and we are fixing to go for a test ride. I have only driven one of these cars in my life. So, does it have the fifth seal of approval? Well, we got a pretty good shot at making it back. Pretty good shot at making it back? Uh -huh. Well, get out of the way. What? Okay. You Call me. You, you got go. your phone? Oh, no, you're going with oh. me. Well, let me show you how to start it. Pretty sure you turn the key and press the button. Not that one. Push that one down? No. no this no. one here? No. This, this. Golly, they got a lot of weird buttons here. Yeah, they took all that. Okay, so up. Then push this one. Yeah. It, it should idle. What the hell? Okay, try, try it again. One more time. I'm gonna leave that out of it. Yeah, you gotta remember, dude. We didn't do the carburetor. It was locked up. 
Well, I thought you let it run for quite a long time. I did. I look good in this car, though. You say so. Feels good. It does. I mean, look, it's a heavy car. Dude. Nice day for it. I mean, rain's coming through. Yeah, you wonder how they keep cool uh, uh, back then, wearing suits and stuff, but it's it, really, the way they engineered the air is really pretty cool. Well, and you uh, think back then, if you didn't have air, you weren't used to it. So. Doesn't mean it wasn't hot, Phipps. Huh? Doesn't mean it wasn't oh, hot. Oh, no, 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 I know that. You know, for some of these that you get, Richard, this one's up there. Well, I don't know, Phipps. Well, I... I Looks like we got a little something coming out of the back of us. Or yeah. Well, well, looks we, like it might have stopped. Well, we had all that ATF to unlock the motor. All right, man. That was a good test drive. Yeah, we made it back. Barely. Well, there it is. I told you it was the cap. <laughs> it doesn't look to me like the cap's on. Well, it's kind of on. So, do we just have the fact that you left the cap off? Well, uh, there's a good chance of that. There's a good chance of that, Phipps. All right, let's clean it up. Let's let it cool down. This thing should have never had antifreeze in it anyway. No. You said it came no. that way? Yeah. Okay. Let's let it cool down. Wash it all off so we don't mess anything up. And let's check the uh, cap. Uh, um, don't touch it now. It's hot, Phipps. I was going to learn that real all fast. All right. We're halfway there, sir. Well, you know, actually, if, you, if you're going to sell it, I would find somebody that wants it and is going to fix the ink here and all this. And they're going to go through all that. All right. Let's do this. Let me see if I can put a, a true description on it. Somebody that's gonna buy this obviously knows what they're doing with it and they, they have the, the wherewithal to fix it and they're probably gonna restore it. So I'm gonna take a couple pictures, put that lid down. I'm gonna take a couple pictures and send them over to our friend, JD Pass, no. see if he wants it. We interrupt this program for an important news announcement. What's up everybody? You know what? Time is running out. This is your last chance to win 200 grand. I mean, literally go to gasmonkeygarage.com, snag a tee and boom, you could be coming here, partying with me and getting 200 grand. What do you do with it? Well, I don't know. You can buy a car from me, leave with some change in your pocket, or you can just take the whole 200 and run. It's up to you, but you can't win if you don't enter. Gasmonkeygarage.com gets you some of that. Came from the little nest we bought uh, from the guy in Alabama where he bought we bought five or six cars and then he backed up on two of them. But this one's a nice uh, 66 Fairlane, big block, 390. These are all nice cars. This guy had nice stuff, so that's good. I like door panels. Look at it. I mean, it's not okay. So look at this. Let me tell you. Let me go show you what we usually get. Come on, over here. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. How fast this fucking boy. Ta-da! <laughs> hey, Richard. Yo. Two more your Alabama cars came, and man, you're gonna like them. You think right. so, Phil? I think so, because I do. Well, it's weird, because I bought them. Yeah, well, you've seen them already. I haven't. So yeah, they look great. Then they drove off the trailer. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, 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 yes. Dude, this is a bad little ride. All original-ish. 66, 390, two barrel, automatic. This is a rad dude. And it's just been sitting in there forever. He bought it brand new. Uh, how many miles? Looks like 95,000. All right, drove the heck out of it. Factory AC too. Hey, look he, at that. He had a mechanic that yeah. kind of came in once a week or so and just kind of kept, he had like 40 or 50 cars in there that kind of just kept them running, maybe tooled them around the block. What we want to do is go through it, look at it, check fuels, check everything else, and uh, make sure every, what we got, what works, what doesn't, and then tell me, a, a, give me a report card. That will help. Uh, and then we'll decide how much we're going to wash and clean, et cetera, and so forth, because I got a really good deal on this. This one here, you know, it's gonna look really nice. Oh heck yeah, it will. Up. Now but this thing, this. I know, I know you like these. Yes, I do. This one's just like your dad's, but much shorter here, which makes it much cooler. Well, okay, so now it's the same window. Oh, that's okay, right. So his, his is a vent, because his had a back seat. This original business coupe had a platform back here. But how do you get the vent? Did he put them in? No, no, it's called a club coupe. Okay. This is a business coupe. Okay, so what I know about this one is a hot rod. I don't know, is it 289 or 302? I don't remember. Uh, this one's been lightly street rodded. It's got a little Mustang II type setup. Yeah, rack and pinion. Look, they did the, they did a nice, man, yeah. check this out. Power brakes, no did, AC. Did tell you when? Is this one got AC or no? no? 
Yeah, yeah it does. It's got AC. It's got Holy. power windows. Let's do the same thing to both of them. Uh, go through them sure. from bumper to bumper, check fluids, check everything else, make sure they sound good, they're not making any noise. And then uh, before we waste a whole bunch of time cleaning them, we'll take them around the block and see what's up. Okay, my dibs this one. Well, it's for sale, Phipps. So uh, I'm pretty stoked. Uh, we got the 66 spare lane in, we got the business coupe, and we got the V12 uh, Lincoln. Um, what you guys don't know is uh, Mr. Royce was really, really having a hard time parting with the other cars that he committed to. And, you know, sometimes it's like that, especially when you've owned cars as long as he has. So uh, he asked me to let him up on uh, getting rid of some of them right this second. So we decided that I'd take these three and uh, I'm kind of first in line for everything else that we mentioned and everything else we saw. So, uh, you know, hopefully he's kicking around, having some good times with the cars he kept and uh, maybe they'll get to Gas Monkey one day. But uh, being out there was just mostly unbelievable. You know, seeing a place like that, knowing that a guy was buying cars like this brand new uh, and his family was and they kept them that long, just absolutely really cool and a super nice guy. So we'll wait and see what happens uh, when he calls me next. All right, so we're out here at Texas Speed Factory today. Uh, we're hanging out with RTR with our brand new 2022 Bronco with the first ever production kit from RTR. So we're gonna go check out some cars, have a good time, maybe get a tour of their place and see what they do. So let's go. Where we strat, he's got this crazy Cobra twin turbo, and uh, we need the rundown because it's nuts. It's a dark block 347, uh, twin 67 mirror image turbos. It's all Holly, it's still all Ford. Um, got the Holly dash, uh, puts over a thousand horsepower to the wheels, is spinning the tires on dyno at 188, um, and she built most of it. Really? <laughs> yes. That's awesome. I, I had my hip replaced last June and she and a buddy put the motor in, in my driveway. That's awesome. So uh, I got a million pictures of it. She she sanded the engine bay down. She did everything she could. Um, That's awesome. So we built it for street track. It's got trans brake. Um, we've been 163 on the highway. Um, and she was laughing, giggling. And I'm like, okay, I'm finished. I, yeah, I, 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 got, I got shut it down. I'm shutting it down. I got scared. We were racing a crotch rocket, pulling away from them, and, and it's, I was like, okay, I'm done. That's awesome. She wants I, more power. Really? You yeah. want more? Hey, there's never enough. Now, all the dyno was fluttering the spring, so uh, the wastegate spring. So we right. were we were maxed out. So we'll change those and add some more to it. Add some more to it. You have to. No, this is a super awesome car, man. It's we a factory really five. It. So. Is it? It's, it's taken us five years to build. We've had three different engine combinations and three different trans. So that's awesome. Yeah, I think we're going to leave it alone for a while. Yeah, I say it, it's perfect the way it is. I'd drive it. We, we drive it to Austin, Oklahoma. Um, we're not afraid to rock, rock trips. No, I mean, that's, what that, it, that's, that's the way to do it. That's what it's meant for. Just drive it. Everybody's like, why don't you paint it? Once we paint it, we're not going to drive it. Yep, it'll be parked. It'll be parked forever. It's basically a woman built car. So that's, that's awesome. I tried to get her to mow the lawn. She said no. <laughs> but she'll <laughs> build the car, I'll right? I'll do the motor, but I'm not, I'm not mowing the lawn. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, so we're here with uh, our boys over at RTR. We got Jordan and Corey. They're going to kind of walk you through what's on the Bronco and then what other products they offer for Mustangs, F 150s. Yeah. I'll just go ahead and tell them what's going on here. Sure. Yeah, so uh, obviously, this is the, the Bronco number 002 that Gas Monkey did. Uh, obviously, everything with RTR starts with the grill. All of our like our signature item, grills and wheels. One of our most popular things that uh, that we have on all of our vehicles that in, that are serialized, badged, and graphic vehicle. All of these are built at dealerships or some of our authorized upfitters like Texas Speed Factory, where we're at today. Uh, but to go through some of the parts, I mentioned the grill. This grill is going to have a modular center bar, so it's made for the 360 camera, the non-camera version, and we also have some things in the works, other you know modular versions like some Bronco uh, naming, some light bars, things like that. Uh, the only thing this Bronco doesn't have on it is the modular front bumper straight from Ford, and we have uh, modular bumper end caps that, that you'd see on our website or, or here at Texas Speed. Uh, coming around the vehicle, uh, this is a Sasquatch, so it, it has our uh, our plus zero Tech 6 wheels and 35 inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers. Uh, nothing's done to the suspension on this, which is great because Ford did such a good job right from the back. Yeah, they nailed that. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Uh, the non Sasquatch versions have the plus 30 offset and 285s rather than the 35s. Uh, next, we got the uh, the tubular rock sliders. 
these here are pretty cool because we manufactured them to be a lifting point for the vehicle. They're super strong, act as a step for the, you know, access the roof, a step to get in the vehicle, especially when you start lifting it, as well as it has a, a tire kick out, uh, which is there just to save your body, save your fenders. So uh, other things on the front are uh, Project X light bar. So these are the Project X FF70s. Uh, we're running all spots and it, it's super sleek. It doesn't whistle, doesn't rattle. Uh, it also doesn't buff it on the soft tops. So you don't create, you know, much of annoying noise as you're going down the road and cause tears and leaks later down the road. So uh, and things are extremely bright. very bright. Uh, some other things that we're gonna be coming out pretty soon is the HP 70s okay. that we're gonna put on the bumper. And each one of those is more powerful than all five of those combined. Really? Yeah. Oh. So uh, with the light bars, it uh, ties directly into the accessory, uh, the auxiliary switches in the vehicle. It has the wiring harnesses that we made up. And obviously you can, if you don't have those accessory switches, you can make your own wiring harness or tie it into just a normal auxiliary switch in the car. Uh, moving around the vehicle, uh, we got our tubular rear bumper. It retains all of the factory sensors. Everything bolts right up. There's no cutting, no modifications required, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, especially when you're running this heavy duty of a, of a package, you got to weld, you got to modify, you got to cut. Nothing that we have requires that. It's all OEM, uh, uses factory hardware, factory mounting locations. So people love that just because they don't have to destroy their vehicle and they can also take it off later down the road. Uh, the rear tire carrier is one of our most sought after items right now. Uh, we beef up the rear hinges, it's all, all billet hinges. That way when you put a, it can hold it to a 40. That way when you put that large of a tire on it, it's not peeling your hinges right off the right off the tailgate. So something that's pretty cool with the, the tailgate is the uh, the accessory mounting plate that we have. This here is showing the uh, the jerry can mount and jerry can. These guys have it locked up just so nobody can take it. You can run a padlock through it or you know lock of choice. But typically this will hinge open, it's self-locking. Uh, it's pretty cool and also gives a little bit of the old school style that you know originally the Broncos had with the jerry cans rather than the rotopack. Uh, and we also, if you can see here, this has, we don't have the high lift jack on it right now, but this is a high lift jack mount uh, or, you know, multiple different jack styles, but high lift is the most traditional. Uh, and that way you can get additional recovery, fix yourself on the trail. So, All right, so something else I want to show you guys is the, uh, the tailgate stop. So as many of you know, and probably have experienced is destroying your taillight on the trail. If you're parked on camber, open the tailgate, it swings open, destroys your taillight. So we wanted to add a little bit of support here. So this is stainless steel, it's adjustable. You can set this to any position that you need to to stop your accessory plate from hitting your taillight. Uh, also, you know, the larger tires, you move things over. And again, it's just gonna cause problems on the trail. And this strengthens up everything. It just stops damages. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you don't want to destroy that irreplaceable taillight. <laughs> it won't be fun. No. Some other things that we have uh, coming are the accessory mounts for inside the vehicle. We have different versions of our spare tire carrier. If you want to run like an OEM tire uh, or an OEM tire carrier with factory bumpers or RTR bumpers, you can, uh, it's a spacer to allow for up to a 35. Uh, we also have some interior pieces, interior packages, leather interior, uh, floor liners, and we're gonna have many different lighting options as well. You'll have the hinge foot pegs as well, right? You can put your foot out. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So one of our most popular items besides the wheels and the grill right now are the, the foot pegs for uh, four door, like two door and four door. And they fold in, they're super strong. They actually bolt to the hinge versus, you know, somebody being able to walk over and just peel them off. So very cool. They have grip tape on them and are in this, a matching graphic style. Uh, people love those things. Yeah, so that's that's killer. I mean, Jeeps don't even have that sometimes. You're just hanging your foot out. Right. Now you have somewhere to put it. Exactly. The other thing that I think is cool about this two chase is like this is meant to get rowdy. We right. want people to get out and use this and thing. Use it. I mean, our, our prototype had been ran out in Moab like crazy. Really? The Fun Runner Bronco has been everywhere. I got to go out in the desert in that thing, and it was freaking sick. That's awesome. It's like for anybody who doesn't know RTR, we started in 2010 with the Mustangs. Vaughn right. Gittin Jr., Ford Performance race car driver, got started with Formula Drift, two-time champion, multi-time champion. Right. When you look at the D1 GP and we want our vehicles to be used. 
So we really got started with Mustang, then we transferred into Ranger, which is really cool in our international markets. People love it here. Right. It's something that you can go out, have fun with on the weekend and not really have to worry about it. Right. Transition over into F-150 and now with Bronco, we're absolutely killing it. People love it. And why Why would you not like, right. love this thing? Right. And this right here is exactly what happens when Richard Rawlings picks up the phone and calls Vaughn Gittin Jr. Right. You get number 002. I know, right? Of one of the baddest vehicles out there right now. Yeah, I mean, it literally aesthetically changes the whole appearance of the whole Bronco. It did not look like this when we picked it up. Yeah, and the fact that people can win this by purchasing stuff through your website right now is insane yeah, to me. Like, crazy. you could take this thing home. Yeah, I've driven this and new. I love it. I know, it's awesome. I love it. And we do, we did put it to the test. It does everything it says it's gonna do and everything holds up just the way it should. Yeah. So we love it. Use it, abuse it, and put it back in the driveway on right. Monday. Exactly. Well, speaking about abusing RTRs, why don't you talk about your truck? Oh, yeah. The F-150 that we have down here is our very first F-150. This is 001 that we built in uh, 2019, just before SEMA. Uh, I had this thing for a few months before we even released it, right. and, and I tested the crap out of this thing. We've been up in the hills of Austin going off-roading and whatnot. Right. Uh, bash plate, that thing holds up to a pretty pretty good size really? rock. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we use the Fox 2.0s on this, rides great, feels like a factory ride when you take it off-road, you're not getting tossed all over the place. Right. We like to use our Ridge Grappler tires from Nitto wrapped, in, uh, wrapped around our Tech 6 wheels, similar like how right. we have on yeah, the Bronco. Yeah. Yeah. So that whole off-road theme, everything uses our signature LED lighting up front in the grill. You can see this from like a mile away and of a night, this thing really, really pops. Oh yeah. Anybody going down the street knows that's an RTR. Yeah, I mean, you pull up in the valet and you're like, Okay, well that guy's got an RTR package for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, we went ahead and put the fender flares on this for anybody who wants to go out off-road, mud slinging and whatnot. Right. We put the, our RTR floor liners in there so you don't have to worry about getting your floors dirty. Right. Um, each one of these is, is serialized. It has our graphics package on it. Exactly. It <laughs> has our graphics package on it and, and everything that we do, again, is functional. We want to make sure right. that it's not being put on there for flash. It's right. got styling cues on there that are awesome, but we want to make sure it's functional and people have fun with it at the end of right. the day. Right, exactly. It has to work. Yeah. If exactly. it doesn't work, then there's no point. Yeah. We're all, all car people. We right. want to go out, have fun, enjoy our vehicle. and. It's built by people. Yep. Same way Gas Monkey yep. does your vehicle. Yep. You, know? you want to enjoy them. You have to enjoy them. Right. Yep. 100%. That's the way to do it. All right. So we're here inside Texas Speed Factory. We're here with Brian. He's going to give us an inside tour of kind of what they got going on. And sound. everybody's telling me it's pretty kick ass. And then uh, we're here with Jordan and Corey from RTR. So they're getting the full tour as well. And uh, let's see what badass shit you got. All right. So uh, we're actually doing a tour right now. Um, this is our first open house. We uh, bought this property back in March of last year. Okay. Moved in in December. And uh, so it was a lot of, uh, used to, this uh, facility used to build um, or make uh, jewelry. Okay. So we had to kind of refashion all this you see right here. It was all jewelry manufacturing, so we That's had to refashion it. Eventually all this will be epoxy painted and all that. Right. But uh, one step at a time, right? When did y'all move in here? Uh, just moved in in December. December, okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this this car show open house is kind of an opportunity to, to let the community know we're here. Okay. What's interesting though is when we started parking our cars out there, they knew we were here. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah right, exactly. And, and we've done no local advertising whatsoever. Really? Yeah. So, uh, so this, this, this show is a great kickoff. That's awesome. Um, if you look on this wall, these are some of the models of the cars that we build. Okay. <clears throat> so you've got um, uh, GT350, yeah. uh, classic, a pro touring model of the 350. Of course, the standard GT500 in different <clears throat> different colors. Up here are the 69 to 70 models. So you've got the right. Boss 429, the Mach 1, and the Boss 302. Okay. We had a limited license through Ford to manufacture those. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, very special vehicles. We still do the Mach 1 and then a, a non-branded 69 Fastback. Okay. We just don't have the Ford license to convert a Mustang Coupe into a Mach 1. Uh, yeah. This is our showroom. These these cars right here are carbon fiber, so you can kind of see them in their different stages. Really? This is actually a, a completed carbon fiber car. It just needs a couple of touch-ups. What, what are you charging for a carbon car? Uh, they run anywhere from uh, 325 to about 340,000. That's not terrible. No, it's not. I mean, how many are you buying all the parts? Or are you making them all? Everything is custom fabricated by us. In-house? Uh, now the carbon fiber we use uh, uh, Composite Brothers. Okay. Um, the guys that came out of Speedcore. Yeah, okay. Um, and, uh, and so they do our carbon fiber for us. That's but, awesome. But we finish it, we paint it. The paint job alone is a $30,000 paint job. Right, yeah, because it has to be perfect to show everything. Oh yeah. Fiber weave is, is absolutely perfect. 
you don't now this is just a repair we're doing right there's no blemishes a lot of times in carbon fiber and you do wet laden when it sets up you get those blemishes and mm -hmm. those imperfections right when you do it in uh in the autoclave under heat and pressure it just sets it yeah, almost perfect. perfect that's yeah. nuts and so are they steel the steel still the steel chassis is just all carbon, carbon yeah, fiber still, still unibody with the outer outer right. shell okay one of the things that we found and really surprised us when we uh, introduced the first complete car back in February of last year at an uh, at Crescent Motorsport Ranch um, is how quiet the car is. Really? Because <clears throat> when you have a steel cage around a steel chassis, you get all the reverberations mm -hmm. and the echoing and all that kind of stuff, the rattling. You put the carbon fiber, carbon fiber absor absorbs energy. Wow. So it absorbs all that sound. So it makes it quite a bit uh, quieter, which will <laughs> help the exhaust and the engine. Right, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's of course, awesome. it's dent resistant, rust resistant, and all that kind of stuff too. We we cut out the shock towers to make more room for yes, the engine, that, yeah. and we use a Mustang II suspension system. You see the original VIN right here, mm -hmm. and yes, then we, we wrapped our line around it, and then the Shelby license plate, okay. the serial plate, will go there. Um, but everything's purpose driven, so all the extra hoses are tucked neatly. Components go here instead of here. Right. The battery's put in the trunk to give it more space up here. Right. Just um, visually appealing. Yep. To the eye. Exactly. Exactly. But it's actually built to perform. You That's know, awesome. Not just look pretty. So, so this is our, our newest project we're really excited about. We're only doing 10 of these. Uh, call it the Diamond Edition in celebration of Shelby American's 60th anniversary. Okay. The, the Diamond anniversary. Right. So <clears throat> this is a carbon fiber Cobra. Again, same process. Scanned an original Cobra. We actually added about two inches of space for the taller you know, clients. For me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for we'll me. only do 10 of these. They'll be running a BMP supercharged uh, Gen 3 Coyote. Okay. Um, with a completely redesigned, re-engineered uh, uh, chassis. Awesome. Um, and uh, the, the body, as you see it right here, only weighs 88 pounds. Inclu really? Including the floor. That's not, obviously, not in there yet. That's insane. Yeah, so one of y'all could stand in there and pick the whole thing up by yourself. And just walk it across the shop. Like <laughs> yeah. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. That is insane. So it's uh, so when they're done, they'll be very unique vehicles. They sell for $1.2 million apiece. Wow. We've, all, we've already sold, this is a prototype. We've already sold one of uh, the Diamond Editions um, with just the body. So once we have that chassis complete, right. feel very confident. Yeah, the rest yeah, will go. yeah, they'll all go. <laughs> Especially with they're bringing that Bear Jackson and stuff right now. Oh yeah. It's insane. So you can kind of see the cars in various stages. Um, you know, when we uh, had the sheet metal, start putting the panels on. These are both Boss 429s. Yep. Um, we had a limited three-year license with Ford that expired in 2020 to build re these models. Okay. So we're still finishing them out. <clears throat> we can still do a 69 uh, Fastback. Yeah, um, just, there just won't be a mark one. Yeah. But uh, so they, they get painted, Raptor lined on the inside, underneath, okay. um, help with uh, rust. Right. Rest. This is, sound good. this is an actual uh, Shelby uh, GT500, so okay. you can kind of compare this one against what you saw down there and see the styling differences. And then this is a Mach 1 waiting to, to go into assembly. So it kind of shows you the whole process. Yeah, the whole process of how it goes. And it's, it's funny, when clients, uh, uh, clients waiting for the car is the biggest challenge. Yep. And uh, we've had a lot of clients visit. In fact, we recently had a client visit from South Africa. Really? And uh, he'd been waiting for his car for some time. He said, now that I see it, I get it. Right. He said, yeah. I had no idea what I was actually getting. Well, and that's what uh, we've been trying to explain to our fans even is just, so uh, we're doing on YouTube, like, as you see it is how we're doing it. And so they're so used to the fast and loud style where we're going to show you an hour or 45 minutes of us building a car from teardown all the way through, fixing all the rust, everything. Yeah. We're going to show you in 45 minutes and you missed 90% of what happened. Yep. So you miss all the little details, all the little extra time you had to put in that. That wrong thing. part you got. Yeah, exactly. Wrong <laughs> part. You're throwing it across the shop. You're like, God dang it, I needed this part like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So now you're trying to overnight. Yeah. You miss all that in a 45 minute time frame. So we're trying to put it out in half an hour to hour segments of this is how it is. And yeah. sometimes you don't touch that car for two or three weeks because you're waiting on parts or you're mm -hmm. waiting for something. And well, so, you take that dynamic and multiply it times dozens of cars, mm -hmm. you know, that we're trying to get complete <clears throat> in a very complex process. Right. Um, you know, I'll give you an example of the Boss 429s. We use a John Cozzi racing engine, the 572. Yep. Um, naturally aspirated, cranks out 800 horsepower. And uh, they're all custom built engines. So, so yeah, you're waiting, you know, used to you might wait you know, a few weeks to a month. Now you're waiting four months. Right. And then it might shift to where you're waiting six months or you're waiting two months. And well, so, yeah, it all depends on parts. Parts. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. Because right everything so, is parts. It's turned in for us. It's turned in more into a communication business than a uh, than a car manufacturing yeah. business. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so. And that's that's one of the things we struggle with too. Is telling the customer, hey, we're 
we're doing everything we can. It's, yeah. We're trying to overnight stuff. We're trying to get everything. We're trying a different avenue. And yeah. It's 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 frustrating. So we have two sides of the house. We introduced Shelby Garage. Um, uh, last year, okay, and the whole purpose of Shelby Garage, Shelby came to us and said, "Hey, since you guys can build these high-performance cars, and Shelby's known for innovation and craftsmanship and, and you know and uh, performance and all these things, why can't we do that on a Camaro or a Corvette or any model?" And so we opened a Shelby Garage to service those vehicles. So now we've we've had GT40s in here, we've had super-performance Cobras, we've had you can see uh, we've got Pontiacs, uh, Mustangs, of course. So uh, clients can come in, we do engine swaps, uh, performance upgrades. That's awesome. So you're not just tied to one market now, yeah. you're open to everything. Yeah. So that's the awesome. only thing we don't do is restoration. Right. As you guys know, you start immediate blasting a car and you realize that they use <laughs> a Coke can. Yeah. You know, oh my God, it's terrible. <laughs> the, you know, half the door is made of Bondo. Yeah. And uh, you have to call the client, it sets all your timelines back. So so we don't do restorations anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's the rough. I mean, that we're buying cars that are the cleanest we can find. We don't care if they're if it ends up being fifty grand for a donor mm -hmm. and we rip it down to nothing. Yeah. It's because we had a good call. Yeah, that's the only way we'll do it. Yeah, exactly right. Way. Well, and, and with the recreation cars, it's easier because we're starting from scratch, so we know what we're working with. Right. You know? Right. Um, so this is the recreation side. We have three more lifts coming in over here, um, but you, you can see. So this is actual CSX a six thousand series Cobra. Really? It's not a it's not a super performance. It's not a factory five. It's funny when I take that to the gas station, guys are like, "Hey, nice Cobra. Is that a factory five or backdraft?" I'm like, "No, that's a Shelby. But right. Not a real Shelby. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, not it's a Shelby real... serial plate. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so as it sits, we, uh, we've got a uh, four twenty seven in it. Okay. Actually, four twenty eight. And it's um, be about one hundred seventy thousand. So, depending on who you are, fairly reasonable, right? Right. Yeah, it's not terrible. Uh, so here's a Mach One. Uh, it's actually mostly done. Uh, about to ship out. Uh, we've got an athlete who uh, purchased that car. Really? Obviously, worked with a lot of athletes and celebrities. Right. And um, that looks good. And uh, so this one's about to be finished up and ship out. Um, this is a, so when a car is done with paint, as you saw in the showroom, comes here and it goes into assembly. First thing we do is suspension, the fuel cell, um, boom mat, the entire car. Right. Um, and, uh, and what we try to explain to clients, every single thing we do, is, as, as you guys know, mm -hmm. is custom. Yeah. Everything's custom, every single part, thousands of parts. And then you get into something that doesn't work right, and you have to go to the fabrication and custom fit a, a bracket. Exactly, I mean, yeah. even fenders nowadays, you have to go in and trim them up and make them fit. And yeah. All the, they're just not the same. Well, finding finding guys and gals actually that we have um, that, that understand that little craftsmanship that don't do it's just hard. you know collision centers. Right. You know, it's very hard mm -hmm. to find people that have that skill. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, for all the times I've had to sit outside your shop and wait for your technicians to come out and hand them a business card, kid. <laughs> right. Right. I know. He's I like, know, wait right. a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a yeah. Minute. Don't tell Richard that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so here's one of our old restoration projects, uh, Thunderbird. Uh, they Basically actually wanted a coyote in it. It's a coyote in it. Yeah. What's That's interesting awesome. is they uh, they didn't want any suspension upgrades. They just wanted stock. Yeah. Huh. So we'll have a couple of waivers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and no brake upgrades at all. Though this is still drums. Yep. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, so, there's a couple of waivers for that one. Yeah, pretty sure, <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure they're drums. So this is the carbon fiber car in fabrication. So this client wanted a Detroit Speed uh, setup. Okay. Um, actually, had a client. That's about a twenty-five thousand dollar upgrade for us. Right. And I had a client look it up online. You know, like people do with doctors, they get online. They, they say, yeah. you know, hey, I looked online and I shouldn't be sick. You right. Know? Yeah. I shouldn't be paying um, twenty-five grand. He's like, it's only ten grand for the. And I'm like, well, that's just the upper part. But what we actually do, and we do this on all our cars, the Mustang is a unibody, so mm -hmm. you get a lot of twist. A lot of twist. Right. So we run three inch subframe connectors front to back on okay. either side on all our Mustangs. The Detroit Speed uses a, a, a square tube, okay. and it, it starts at the back uh, at the back uh, axle. Yep, and it comes comes up into the car and then back down and reattaches to see that assembly sitting on the ground. Yeah, and so the the entire Detroit Speed setup is front to back. Adds a lot more rigidity and, and adjustability to the right. suspension. Well, it's kind of like what Roadster Shop's trying to do with these unibody cars is put a full frame under them, mm -hmm. which is super awesome because now you're, don't have, you don't have all the twists. It's all into the yeah. box frame. So this building right here, we're, we have a lot of partner companies. Mm -hmm. Well, we bought into a company called EVA. It's a French company. Okay. You can look it up on YouTube. But it, uh, you've done the uh, virtual reality gaming, you know, like uh, zero latency, different, yeah. different people. 
But it's a one and done. Okay. This is like playing Call of Duty <clears throat> um, in virtual reality. Really? So it'll have two stadiums in there, and you put on the, the goggles, you got the gun, you got the pack, you go into the stadium, there's no fixtures. But you can go up and down stairs, shoot down, shoot up, and it keeps track of your score. It's all subscription based. Right. There's gonna be a five-star restaurant in there, bar, hangout area. That's awesome. And so the whole idea is that this this whole property becomes, that's why we renamed it Texas Speed Factory. It's kind of reflect all the different brands. Right. We got RTR, I mean, everybody just thinks of adrenaline. Right. You know, these $300,000 Mustangs, we got virtual reality. Right, it's kind of like you're building, taking a business and making it a car community area where people can just come hang out, bring yeah. family, kids can play here, you can go over here and bullshit, smoke cigars yeah. and yeah, stuff like that. So I think that's awesome. Well, that's kind of a wrap for today. Uh, I haven't really even checked up on Isle of Man and I'm so interested to see, because Richard's over there right now with Peter Hickman and they're racing and oh, well he won the first race. So he's up, he was up by 30 seconds from second place lead, or second place. So that's moving. I mean, to be a whole half a minute up in a race, that's insane. So, yeah, I hope they're having a good time over there and hope well, we had a good time today. But fortunately, I have to go back to work. <laughs>